Hey there and welcome to Easy Game Art. In the previous three episodes we've covered the creation of 2D game art for the character, foreground and background graphics for our little prehistoric jungle platforming game which we'll eventually compile together. And in this fourth episode um, we'll take a look at some UI elements, UI graphics, especially the title screen, some buttons and probably a little health bar. So let's get right into it. Okay, so let's start with the title screen. This will consist mostly of um, a banner with the name of our game and a few buttons, maybe two or three. So just regular main menu buttons like play and the options and quit and whatever. Um, yeah, so usually I start with um, a rectangle indicating the background and having um, the size of our or the proportions of our screen. So just whatever, 16 by nine. And then I just hold control and drag it up to constrain the, the proportions. Just some plain um, desaturated color to not disturb us from the actual content. And yeah, I wanna have a little banner here in the, in the center maybe. Um, and I just go for the wood uh, look again because that fits with our theme. And we've done a few assets before um, using a similar technique with the trees and so on. So I'll just create um, yeah, uh, some wooden logs with, with um, a few simple shapes. Okay, I guess that's fine for now. Um, then I just hold Control G to group this together and yeah, this will serve as a basic log, which we'll reuse a few times. Um, okay, next I'll create the background for uh, this banner, which is going to be some kind of non-rectangular shape like that. Yeah, I guess that should do fine. And then I use this log to, yeah, to draw the edges of, of this banner. So let's resize it a little bit like that. May have to stretch it a little bit and then rotate it. Um, yeah, it's it's far from perfect, but I think it'll be all right um, if we have the final result. So let's just duplicate this and adjust its size. All right, so yeah, as I said, far from perfect, but um, we want to do something quick here and I think in the end it it will be fine. So let's add a few little details, maybe screws to hold these locks together. I've just used uh, um, this uh, the subtract uh, path tool here, the difference actually. Um, so basically you just um, use a circle and then on top of it draw a rectangle and then you select both of them and uh, use control minors or the difference here and this will just produce this subtractive shape. Okay, so just some minor details. Then uh, we're going to need some text. Um, for that we'll first um, find some fonts that fits our style. So for finding custom fonts, I really like to use uh, dafont.com, which is a, it's a great, probably the, the most extensive source of fonts. Also a lot of uh, free to use fonts, even for commercial use. I think I'll go with this one. Uh, it's, it was in the comic section actually, but uh, um, I think it will look okay. So as far as licensing goes, in generally, um, this here will tell you you're probably fine if you're going to use it even in commercial products, if it says 100% free. However, um, a lot of times there is a, a text file included uh, in the download. So make sure to read it because a lot of times it says, yeah, it you're fine to use it, but it would be nice to maybe have a donation if you use it in commercial products or actually at least tell me to um, or tell the author 
if you've used it um, or give credit or whatever. So yeah, it really depends on, on the author. Also the authors very much deserve it because there are a lot of really great free fonts available here and it's quite a bit of work to assemble such a thing. Okay, so one more thing. Um, I don't know if it's Inkscape, but um, sometimes you have to, in order to actually see the newly installed fonts here, um, you have to make sure that you install the font for all users, not just for the currently logged in one. Um, I guess that depends on where you install Inkscape and whatever. Um, but uh, in order to do that, just uh, extract uh, the font file and right click um, and there should be something like install for all users. So this should be the solution if you really don't see it here, even after you've uh, restarted Inkscape. Okay, so anyway, we should have our font here now. Yeah, Brady Bunch Remastered, that was it. Um, okay, so I'll just drag up a, a text box and the name I've come up with is just Prehistoria, in lack of a better name, but it should do fine. Um, and I'll just select our newly installed font for that. I think it looks decent. Yeah, and then we'll do a little bit of styling. So yeah, there are a bunch of ways to to style text. Either you want just really a, a simplistic style, just one color and maybe one one shadow color. So I just duplicated it and and uh, put it behind this one. So this is probably the, the simplest way to have it. In this case, I I want to add a, a, another layer. So I'll just duplicate this once again and assign a stroke with a lot of pretty big stroke width. Um, and then I'll again put this behind the, the front layer. So this way you get this really solid uh, outline. You can also select something different than black for that. Oh yeah, and move these two a little bit up here. Then actually we have to duplicate the one with the, the outline again, then select a black stroke. And we have also this black shadow. Yes, kind of like that. This should have a little more detail as well. A little bit of a shadow to the entire box. Um, in this case, I'll probably do it with a blur effect. So you can select the blur um, intensity here and then move it um, to the back. And then you have this nice, really smooth um, shade shadow which you can adjust by uh, changing the shape a little bit. Yeah, I think it'll do. Um, let's change this actually to a little green background. Prehistoria, um, let's add some buttons. Since we are very lazy, let's just copy the entire thing here. Uh, duplicate, remove the text and the shadow and then scale it down um, in order to get our button. <laughs> I mean, this is obviously not the best way to do, but it's it's pretty fast. Um, and actually, let's adjust um, it a little bit in order to not look as shitty as it does now. Okay, I think it got a little bit better. Um, we want to have the same font here and I just, I mean, we might, we might do this actually dynamically later in the engine, but whatever, just for the sake of it, let's um, write it down statically. And Again, we'll duplicate this a few times, maybe even flip it. Let's do options and maybe whatever, quit. All right, so what else could we do? Uh, maybe 
let's let's again use the same log here and use it as an as a border of the entire screen. Okay, um, maybe some hover effect. Um, yeah, let's just resize it when we hover it and change the color a little bit. And let's add some shadow here actually. Um, I'll just do this by having a black to transparent gradient and putting it behind this object. And then you can adjust it again here. Yeah, it's it's pretty rough, but um, but it's working. Um, yeah, the the green placeholder background obviously we are going to um, remove now. And here uh, in the background in the game, then we'll insert some actual game scene. Um, so this will do fine as a background then. All right, and since our locks here, our box is already so well prepared. Let's reuse it one more time for the health bar actually, because why not? This should be more rectangular because um, now we want to have um, the fill texture, um, which is then about just, which we're then just going to scale so this is easier if we are do it, doing it this way. Um, so yeah, for the fill, we'll just use a rectangle with a vertical gradient. All right, so yeah, so these were really just a bunch of really easy and, and quick to create assets. Now let's include our previously created graphics um, to see how, how the title screen will, will look in the end. Okay, so I've just added the entire bunch here and let's place it in the back um, and just this a little bit. Okay, so this is kind of what it will look like. Um, maybe we'll use a little black transparent um, overlay. I'm satisfied with the tile screen. So in the next episode, I actually plan to start uh, with the Unity part. Uh, so we are going to actually assemble a little game, a little um, 2D platformer with all the graphics we've created in, in these four episodes now. So yeah, I look forward to that and hope to see you next time. Until then, have fun creating your graphics and bye.